All right, everybody. So we're going to start um, our virtual workshop here in a couple minutes. Um, I'm excited uh, to teach this about detoxing. I think that uh, this is a major um, area that everybody needs to be aware of. Everybody this time of year is cleaning their um, their their yards. They're cleaning their house. And one area that you have to um, not neglect is how to clean up your body, how to detox your body, clean up your products, clean up your cleaning products, clean up your personal care. So today we're going to be diving into all of that, um, how to really work on detoxifying uh, the things that you're using on a daily basis and how to eliminate um, toxins from your body as well, too. So um, as we're kind of waiting for people to get on, just feel free to um, to log in to uh, ask questions. Uh, feel free to share this video to people that um, need to hear this information. Um, just working with patients for you know 12 years, I feel like this is an area that people, um, they do tend to neglect after um, they, they focus on eating better, they focus on exercising, they focus on their getting their spine adjusted. But this is sometimes one of the last areas that people do clean up is going to be their um, their diet or their their detoxing and their products um, as well. So um, when we uh, just to kind of share for those of you that um, that may not be a patient in our office, um, I'm Dr. Katie Benson. I'm a, a wellness doctor um, in in Marysville now for over 12 years. Um, just have a passion to see people healthy. I just want to give a shout out to my patients that um, we love taking care of you guys. We love um, your commitment to your health. And um, we just feel blessed to be able to um, have such great people that we get to um, just encourage, that we get to help see, you know, become healthier. So I just love you guys. I love um, I love taking care of you. And, um, and I hope today's workshops, uh, you'll learn some great things for your health as well too. So uh, one of our essentials that we teach uh, to get patients healthy is to minimize toxins. And that's what today's talk is going to be heavily focused on, um, as well as when you incorporate this into a better nutritional um, lifestyle, better mindset, oxygen, um, exercise, moving your body, getting your spine aligned so things work good. When you address this toxicity aspect, then you can really see your health go to a whole new level um, as well. So when we look at kind of uh, what's happening right now, it's kind of crazy when you think about it, but asthma, allergies, obesities, all these diseases have really tripled um, in the last couple of decades. Autoimmune diseases, especially thyroid problems, um, are really ravaging the female population. And then autism that used to be only one in 10,000 30, 40 years ago, it's now uh, between one and 159 children in the United States um, have uh, um, uh, autism right now. And insomnia, depression, anxiety, you know, all those things are at um, all time highs. So when we look at these things, we have to kind of wonder like, why, why is this happening? Why are we seeing such spikes in all these diseases? And why the biggest diseases that we're seeing increased numbers in is cancer. Uh, one in three um, is your chances of developing cancer in your lifetime. You have a one in three chance of developing cancer. Um, the number of children that cancer is now the number one disease killer for children in the United States ages one to 15. And here's an interesting um, fact is that 95% of all cancer is due to diet and the accumulation of toxins is that um, it's not, it's not genetics, um, but that 95%, the whopping number of cancers uh, are due to your diet and the accumulation of toxins in your body. So when we look at this is that it's not just genetics. So um, this was a study that was done. It was an important study that was done. And uh, what they did is they took the blood from 10 Americans and they took blood samples um, and they were from Americans that had no direct contact 
uh, to expose you to toxins. And the reason is, is because the blood came from the umbilical cord while the baby was still in utero. And what they found when they looked at the blood from the umbilical cord of the babies that were still in utero, when they tested them, they found 278 chemicals were found in that umbilical cord blood um, and the average baby um, had uh, two had over 200 chemicals that were found in the, the umbilical cord blood. And of those chemicals, a lot of them were found to be um, carcinogenic. They were found to cause um, uh, developmental um, issues with the baby. And um, we're just seeing that we're, we're pretty much bombarded and marinating our bodies in, in hundreds of um, of chemicals every single day. Um, and we're exposed to thousands of chemicals in our food supply, thousands of chemicals in cleaning products, um, you know, personal care products. And it's and it and it's passed down um, from parents to their children can pass down a certain levels of toxicity as well. So today I'm going to be exposing the top toxins and how to protect yourself, how to really decrease um, the amount of toxins that you're exposed to, um, especially on a daily basis. So the number one um, source of toxicity for Americans um, is medication, prescription drugs. Uh, medication, the number one source of toxicity. Reason being, because Americans fill, um, this was from 2018, um, 5.8 billion prescriptions um, is what uh, Americans filled in 2018. That average is 17.6 prescriptions per person. Um, John Hopkins did a, uh, a longitudinal study, and uh, what they found is that uh, they did the study between the years 2000 and 2008, and that over 250,000 deaths per year were actually caused from medical error and from prescription drug side effects. Uh, people that are, are literally dying just from the, the sheer chemicals that they're ingesting every day by their taking their prescription drugs. And um, it only uh, is the third leading cause of death for Americans. So heart disease, cancer, number one, number two, number three, followed by um, medical air drug reactions um, with that. And just note that every medication is a combination of chemicals and it's designed to speed up something, slow down something to alter a, uh, a process in your body. And uh, that they do serve a place for a temporary um, solution uh, for if you're in crisis, but you should never be happy with taking a medication long term because it is a source of toxicity. And the longer you take a medication, the longer you are, the more likely you are to, to uh, have interactions or die of the side effects versus really sometimes what you're even taking the medication for. So I got a good video that kind of talks about uh, prescription drugs and just how um, not only are you exposed to them if you're taking them, but really where um, some Americans are getting exposed to, to prescription drugs and they're not even physically having to take them um, personally. So pull up this video here. Well, do you know what's in your drinking water? A shocking Associated Press investigation found various pharmaceuticals in the drinking supplies of at least 41 million Americans. Tainted water was found from New Jersey to California. NBC's Tom Costello is following the story from Washington. Tom, I've been dying to ask somebody some questions about this story. First of all, what kinds of drugs are we talking about? And... and how dangerous is this? Pretty, uh, pretty wide range. Here's the drinking water in Washington, D.C. They found six pharmaceuticals in our drinking water here. They include ibuprofen, caffeine, monocin, and about three or four others. In Philadelphia, they had 56 pharmaceuticals or byproducts. They range everything from epilepsy medication to mental health medicines to uh, pharmaceuticals that really run the gamut. Here's the bottom line from the Associated Press on the study they did. It was, as you mentioned, a five-month investigation involving the AP investigative team, 50 major cities in 50 states were looked at, and drugs were found in the water of 24 major cities. We're talking 41 million Americans here who drink that water. So what's in the water? Everything from acetaminophen and ibuprofen to mood stabilizers, antibiotics, angina, heart, as well as cholesterol drugs, and even sex hormones. The trouble here, Meek, is that the federal government does not test specifically for pharmaceuticals in the water. And in fact, there 
there is no way to scrub water that is in a treatment plant for pharmaceuticals. And so now we have a situation where states and cities across the country are just starting to realize that there are the remnants of pharmaceuticals in the drinking water. All of that said, we should emphasize, we're talking here about parts per billion or trillion, really minute traces of pharmaceuticals that are in the water. And you say, well, how did it get there? Well, without getting too graphic, all of us who take medication for one thing or another, we don't absorb all of it. It is excreted. Uh, it gets into the sewage system, into the water treatment plants. And then, because water treatment plants can't scrub it all out, if any of it, it just kind of dilutes on into the water system. Sometimes it gets into the water table, into wildlife, and then into reservoirs. It goes back into the water treatment site, into the water treatment plants. I wonder if there's going to be, you know, long-term study about effects of this down the road. Uh, but, but I guess initially, Tom, the question I'm sure you're asking today is, is there anything the government can do about this? Yeah, and the EPA says it's concerned about it, but, you know, we we don't yet know, and, and water treatment utility plants say they are convinced that there is no immediate threat to anybody out there. That said, I did a story about four years ago in which we found a river in Colorado, and now we know there are many rivers, in which the fish were turning from male to female. And the reason was because there was too much estrogen in the water. The, the natural female hormone was literally turning male fish into female fish. And the thinking was that this is a canary in a coal mine. So now the question is, what's the impact on humans? Yeah, that's the next one. Tom Costello on this story from Washington. So, oh my gosh, like that's kind of crazy if you think about that, uh, you know, it, there's enough effect of those chemicals in the water to turn fish from male to female, uh, you know, long term, what is that doing to our um, our bodies when we're drinking that water, or just let alone when you're just ingesting medications on a on a on a daily basis? So um, the number uh, two thing besides medications, um, and my last note I want to make on that is that you should have a plan to to be um, trying to exit off your medication by actually getting healthier. Like you should try to be making sure that you're cleaning up your diet, you're exercising regularly, um, you're getting your body working better from the inside by, by getting adjustments, getting your healing in, in alignment. So you can have a goal to work with your doctor to get off the medication so you're not on those things um, long term. Um, the second big source of toxicity for Americans is um, vaccinations. Um, in 1950, your child would have received up to five separate vaccines by the time they reach six years of age. Um, but now, uh, today, um, as of 2017, if you follow the CDC um, Center for Disease Control's, um, you know, uh, recommendations, is that your child will receive 72 doses of 17 different vaccines by the time they're 18 years old. So um, those of you that have kids or young kids, uh, you, know, you have to know is like they're getting way more vaccines than what you did as a, ch as a child. Those of you that are grandparents, the, the, your grandkids are getting way more than what you got when you were a child. And um, I just wanna talk about some of the ingredients that um, are commonly found in vaccines. So um, vaccines do contain toxic um, ingredients. Uh, some of the ingredients listed, this is straight from the CDC website, um, live or weakened viruses, uh, killed bacteria, mercury, formaldehyde, uh, phenol, sodium borate, polysorbate 80, um, sugar, yeast, hydrocortisone, um, a steroid, milk and egg protein, um, MSG, gelatin, antibiotics, calf serum, um, human and animal and DNA, uh, um, animal and insect DNA. So, and there's also things like aluminum, thimerosal, um, and, and vaccinations as well, formaldehyde, some of the most toxic things that when we're talking about, um, when we're talking about cleaning up our body, the last thing that you, you want to be doing is injecting poisonous chemicals and toxins straight into your bloodstream. Um, we're exposed to enough toxins just through environment, 
let alone to be getting this onslaught of chemicals um, via the, the medications or via the vaccinations. And these toxic ingredients um, are linked to um, all sorts of health issues. So when you look at that list uh, on the paper, let me blow it up so you can see it more, but um, things like um, seizures, they can cause seizures, they can cause multiple sclerosis, um, food allergies, infertility, uh, cancer, ALS, sudden infant death syndrome, epilepsy, asthma, autoimmune, speech delays, um, anxiety, uh, autism. And uh, I know that this is a topic that, um, you know, it may strike, you know, conversely, but I think that a majority of people are really not aware of what is actually in a vaccine. And for me, I read this list of ingredients and there is no way that I would um, it put that in my body. There's no way that I would, um, you know, even consider eating anything that had that in there, let alone injecting it straight into um, the bloodstream, especially um, in the bloodstream of, of young children. So uh, this is a, a new book that's out. It's called Plague of Corruption. Um, it's, uh, I encourage um, uh, everybody to kind of get this book and read it. And um, it's, it's becoming a, a New York Times bestseller. It's on Amazon. It's, it's currently kind of out of stock. But um, Dr. Judy uh, Makovitz, um, she um, has led uh, a lot of research and a lot of studies. She's a, a leading immunologist, a, a leading virologist, and she's showing how when these vaccines are grown on um, animal cell uh, lines, animal cultures, whether from mice or monkeys or dogs or um, from, you know, aborted fetal tissue, that uh, when they grow these um, vaccines, these viruses on these uh, animal tissues, and then uh, they become highly contaminated with different types of viruses. And then you're injecting this animal DNA into our human body that, um, that that is like they're kind of starting to play God and seeing what happens like a human experiment. Now, what happens when you inject animal DNA and animal tissue into, uh, you know, a baby or into, you know, a developing human? And um, through her research, she's found that uh, that this is causing a plague of chronic diseases such as autism, chronic fatigue syndrome, cancer and many, many more. And um, I just watched a documentary about her today and just she's trying to expose the dangers. Um, but um, government officials, Big Pharma, um, they kind of put an end to a lot of her research. And uh, but I think this is a very worthwhile book to read um, just to kind of understand um, what what is in vaccines and what are your risks and and you know and and for me personally you know it's your own choice you can choose to do what you want to do with your body but um i just know the more i've looked into it the more i've researched um you know no there's no way that i would be injecting that into my bodies or allowing that to be um, injected in, into my child's body. God gave us an immune system. Um, we were not lacking uh, when we came out of the womb. Uh, God developed just like he gave us a cardiovascular system. He gave us, a, you know, a respiratory system, a digestive system. He also gave us an immune system that's fully able to fight and heal um, without adding anything to it. A lot of the times, the more man alters, the more man tries to um, inject in, then the more you end up actually uh, causing problems downstream, uh, major issues. Um, for me, I'd rather my kids get chicken pox um, than to end up, you know, developing cancer because of some of these ingredients that are in, in the vaccines. So um, the next video I want to show you just talks a little bit about um, chemicals that we're exposed to with beauty products. And um, this is another big area where you may be exposed to a lot of toxins and may not be realizing that. In our consumer watchdog report tonight, it was startling to learn a number today. 120 is the answer. 120 chemicals in care products, cream shampoos used every day by women, most of them untested and a lot by men as well. Today, even lawmakers said it was time for a wake up call and ABC senior national correspondent Jim Avila has those details. The average woman applies 12 beauty products to her body every day. 
120 chemicals. For men, it's six cosmetics and 80 chemicals. And few, including Betty Lee Hansen, think much about what's in them. No, I don't. Shame on me. But right now, no one has the authority to help her, not even the government. So here are some of the chemicals advocates say Americans put on their body every day. From formaldehyde, a known carcinogen, and dioxane in some shampoos, to lead on your lips, parabens possibly linked to cancer and deodorant, even mercury and skin lightening creams, toluene known to cause headaches and nail polish, and diethylphthalate linked to allergies, hormone disruption, and dermatitis in perfume. Europe has banned 1,200 such chemicals, the U.S. only 10. So critics say cosmetic makers mix a riskier brew of the same product for domestic use. Companies think that their European customers deserve safer products. There is now a move in Congress to pass a bill regulating cosmetics by summer, requiring labeling all ingredients and prohibiting chemicals linked to cancer or reproductive problems. Cosmetic companies spent three and a half million dollars lobbying against the bill saying it would curtail innovation and compromise trade secrets. Until Congress acts, advocates recommend finding the shortest label with the fewest ingredients. And if you can't pronounce them, don't use it. Jim Avila, ABC News. What? So these chemicals are in, um, you know, pretty much all the products that you use on a regular basis. You'd be surprised that they're loaded with these harmful chemicals. Um, one example is just deodorant. Um, when you look through the ingredients in, in deodorant, any deodorant that you'd pull off the shelf at, you know, Walmart or, or you know, Meyer, chances are you read the label, you're going to find things like aluminum. Um, aluminum is a neurotoxin. It's been linked to diseases like Alzheimer's disease, breast cancer, prostate cancer, propylene glycol, um, which is... Um, uh, antifreeze, and um, it's linked to central nervous system, liver, and heart problems. They contain parabens um, that are used as a preservative, and they're known disruptors um, of your hormones, and um, linked to things like breast cancer uh, and um, um, you know making people become sterile. They found uh, phthalates um, increase your risk of birth defects. And then triclosan is an antibacterial ingredient, uh, classifies it as a pesticide by the FDA and EPA, and it affects your body and it's a known um, carcinogen. So, um, you know, most of you, if you're not aware, if you go to your um, bathroom right now and you flip over your deodorant, you will find things like that aluminum, the propylene glycol, you're gonna read these ingredients um, on, on your deodorants. And um, it's not just deodorant, it's, it's in your toothpaste, it's in your shampoos, um, they're loaded with chemicals. That's why the average woman um, puts over a hundred, um, uh, well over 130 plus chemicals on her body a day because they all accumulate in all these products. Um, and the average man um, has less, but but they're still exposed to tons of chemicals on a, on a daily basis. Um, I did a few videos. I know some of you guys have watched these. I wanted to share these because I kind of go product by product. And then I'm going to show these videos. And at the end, I'm going to um, talk about um, my favorite products, um, newer ones that I found since I've even done these videos, and just how to be aware, how to, how to clean up these products. Um, but these have some really good practical steps um, that you can take to work on improving your, your personal care products. Hi, everybody. Dr. Katie here. Uh, I want to share today about um, cleaning up uh, your personal care products. Toxicity is a big issue. And the number one thing I want um, everybody to know is that our bodies are amazing. They are built to heal and they're built to fight cancer. You know, we're created in God's image. Our liver is meant to detoxify. But in today's society, we are bombarded with chemicals. The average woman puts 168 chemicals a day on her body through a combination of like 12 different products. The average man puts 84 chemicals a day on his body through about six to eight different products. So um, this is important to learn how to buy cleaner products. And one big product that most everybody uses is deodorant. Um, your name brands like a degree or the other main name brand of deodorant 
one of the very first ingredients that you'll read on their active ingredient is aluminum. Aluminum is a neurotoxin, very toxic to your brain, and is known to actually cause cancer. And the bad thing is, is that we put it right on our armpits. There's a lot of sweat glands in that area that absorb, and then it goes like straight to the breast tissue. So you really want to work on cleaning up um, your deodorant. And one crazy thing is, is that a rule I like to go by is if I wouldn't eat it, then I wouldn't put it on my skin because everything that you put on your skin absorbs within your bloodstream within minutes. So it's not like you can just rub something on your you know, armpits and it doesn't get into the rest of your system. So when it comes to deodorant, um, these are a few of uh, our favorite brands. One is Schmitz. This is available at a lot of um, stores, and but it's natural deodorant. It has no aluminum. And then the main ingredients in there are arrowroot powder, uh, baking soda, and then it has a combination of like coconut oil, shea butter, and essential oils. It works really well and, um, you know, a good option for deodorant. This is another one I found. It's through a company called Bubble and B. And same thing, it's made with baking soda, lemon, and clove oil. And um, that's another good option for deodorant. Toothpaste is a big thing. I think about body absorbing chemicals. Our mouth is, you know, very, it has tons of blood vessels, tons of saliva. So what we put in our mouth, like our body absorbs. So toothpaste is a big one. Um, almost all conventional toothpaste have fluoride. Fluoride is a neurotoxin. It's known to cause cancer. And, um, and one thing for me is like, you know, having two boys, a uh, two-year-old and a five-year-old, they love toothpaste. And like, you'll catch them in the bathroom just like squeezing the toothpaste bottle and like eating it. And, um, and the scary thing is that you read most toothpaste that has a warning label on it that says, do not keep out of, uh, keep keep away from kids age six and under. If consumed, contact the poison control center. Um, if they, if they eat it and it's like, if it has that warning on it, why would you want to brush your teeth with it every day? So you got to switch up your toothpaste to cleaner options that have no fluoride, no SLS, no things like ethylene or, or propylene glycol, like antifreeze, which is surprisingly in a lot of toothpaste. So, um, Dr. Bronner's has a really good toothpaste. Um, this is one of our ones that we use our kids like this, um, type of toothpaste. Um, this is another type of toothpaste called earth paste. It's actually kind of neat because they use bentonite clay and essential oil and xylitol and sea salt. And that's pretty much all that's in there. Um, so good options when it comes to cleaning up your toothpaste. Um, other things that are really key to clean up are like what you're putting on your body in the shower. So when we're in a warm shower, all of our pores open up and that's when they kind of really absorb um, what's being put into them. So you want to make sure you clean up your shampoo. This is one of my new favorite shampoos. Um, it's from that same company, Bubble and Bee. But um, you read the ingredients, they are absolutely amazing. Um, just uh, oils in there, coconut oil, olive oil, um, uh, lemon, essential oil, almond oil, uh, and then like aloe vera, rosemary extract, no bad stuff at all. So same thing like shampoos, um, body wash, um, same brand that Bubble and Bee. I also will use sometimes just the Bronner's liquid Castile soap using that for like a shower gel or a shampoo. And then a shave gel, same thing um, for men, like a shaving uh, soap. Um, Dr. Bronner's is a very good option for that as well too. And then um, lotion. So the main thing I use for lotion is just extra virgin coconut oil. Um, either in packets like this or just a big you know, jar of coconut oil. It works amazing for all things lotion. Um, and then it's very good for a makeup remover. So makeup removers are loaded with harmful chemicals. You just put a little bit of coconut oil on a you know, warm washcloth with water, wipe your face with it, and it will take off all your makeup. And then you can also buy like organic um, body butters uh, that are just made with like shea butter and coconut oil and some essential oils to make them smell good. But um, most of your name brand lotions like Suave or for kids like Johnson & Johnson, um, they are notorious for being some of the worst as, as far as having chemicals that disrupt your hormones that are known to cause uh, cancer. So you want to transition away from a lot of those name brand um, products. 
perfume. Um, uh, perfume is known to be just pure chemical. Uh, the name fragrance on a label can contain up to a hundred plus different chemicals. So we try to stick with just using essential oils that you think smell good, whether it be lemongrass or lavender. Um, I just encourage you to get away from using perfume or cologne and just try to do more of the essential oil route um, as far as like smelling good. And then um, makeup. Oh, so this is kind of a neat thing. Uh, conditioner. Um, you can buy healthy organic conditioners or you can just use apple cider vinegar. Um, fill a bottle with apple cider vinegar or vinegar, white vinegar, and then fill the rest with water. And then you can put a drop of essential oil and then you can rinse your hair with that. And it acts as a conditioner and it actually helps to soften your hair. And you can't get much cleaner than that when it comes to ingredients. Makeups, there's a few different options. Um, the brand that I've used for a long time is called Me Essence. Uh, I know a, a lot of um, women that use um, Suzanne Summers. She has an organic line called Suzanne Organics. You can research any makeups on that environmental working group, ewg.org website, um, to kind of look it up. But um, those are good. I know Mineral Fusion is another uh, decent brand. Um, this is just a brand of mascara that I got at Whole Foods called Pacifica. Um, cleaner, cleaner ingredients in that as well. And then um, the last thing I'll kind of share about um, two things is one is sunscreen. So sunscreen has some of the most toxic ingredients in it. Uh, they have chemicals that are known to disrupt your hormones that can affect your estrogen levels. Um, so I think about that with children, like when you lather them up with sunscreen and you're putting all these chemicals on their body that disrupt hormones and can actually cause things like skin cancer, you really want to buy better brands. This is the brand we use. It's called Badger. Uh, what it uses as its um, sun protector is non-nano zinc oxide rather than using like oxybenzone, the chemical like sunblock. Um, this uses the um, zinc oxide and then it has clean ingredients that make up the base of it. So um, switching up sunscreen is super important. Um, I think especially for children as they're developing and growing, you don't want all those harmful chemicals on their skin. And then the last thing is going to be um, those ladies out there, it's tampons. So uh, this is an area that I overlook for a long time, but yet most uh, tampons are treated with harmful chemicals. They're bleached. And then um, as the, you're, they're used, you can absorb a lot of those chemicals into your body. So um, Seventh Generation has a good brand. There are several brands of good, um, healthier options of tampons, but mainly they're made with organic cotton, uh, no chlorine, no chemicals. So that's another area to look at when it comes to kind of detoxing your products as well, too. So I know that when it comes to changing these things, it can be overwhelming. Um, so those of you that have questions, feel free to. OK, so um, on that um, note on that video, um, yeah, just it's easy. Like, that's what I like about the, the cleaning up products. Once you buy the better brands, it's not it's not hard, but it's just getting the better stuff and using it. Um, I did find a new type of shampoo conditioner that I like even more than what I talked about in that video. And um, you, some of these natural shampoos, you use them for a while and then your hair kind of starts to feel greasy. It's like it's not getting cleaned. So the brand that um, I found that works really well, um, Stephanie just posted it in the comments. It's that OM Botanicals, and um, I it works really well. I've been using it for a while now, their shampoo and their conditioner. They also have lotions and other products, but I definitely, like, if you're looking to, to buy cleaner shampoos, conditioners, I would recommend that product to, to get that one for sure because um, I think it works really well and um, super clean. Um, as far as the ingredients go too. So um, the next video I wanna go through is gonna be um, same, similar, but it's gonna be talking about your cleaning products. Uh, this is key because I think with everything that's going on, people have been cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and using a lot of toxic hand sanitizers, a lot of toxic harsh cleaning chemicals that can be damaging to your bodies. So I'm gonna talk to you about how to clean up, how to minimize, um, the products that you're using to clean with, um, you know, on a, on a, you know, routine basis at home as well. 
Hi everybody, Dr. Katie here. Um, today I wanted to share with you how to clean up your products. Uh, mainly today I want to talk about household products. This is an area that you really need to um, pay attention to. Uh, we are exposed to thousands of chemicals every single day and these chemicals are known to cause cancer. They're known to affect our hormones, uh, reproductive health. They can cause asthma, allergies, and most of the products that you buy at the store, conventional products, are some of the worst ones. Ones. So today I'm going to share with you guys like how to how to clean them up, how to make this easy, um, and then some better options um, you know to use at home. So some of the worst things that you can use are going to be um, your laundry detergents, and most of the ones that, um, like I said, name brands that you see at the store are some of the worst um, you know contributors to toxins. So Tide is a is a known brand, but one thing that scares me is like when you look at it, you it doesn't even have to list the ingredients which is scary is that they don't even have to rate, you know, what's in them. And so a great way to kind of tell whether your products are clean or toxic is you can go to the website um, EWG um, dot org environmental working group and they have a database of products so you can type in there any product so you search in there so i'm going to type in tide and then i search it and then ideally you would want it to rank a ranking of a like of the products that i use i try to keep them to a or just, you know, you make them yourself or you just, I'll talk about it in a minute, like use just super clean ingredients. But you look at Tide, it ranks C and it ranks D. So then I click on it and I click on the, um, let's say the Tide here. And then it pulls it up and it shows you what is a problem like with it, where it ranks. So it has very high concern for asthma, respiratory, skin irritation, but this is crazy. Developmental and reproductive toxicity uh, ranks as far as concern. So that's the last thing that you would want to be washing your kids clothes in is gonna be tied because it sticks in our fabric and then it, it's constantly against our skin all day, which can allow those toxins to absorb into our body. So you gotta change up your laundry detergent. Um, another big one is you gotta do away with our dryer sheets. So just smelling this dryer sheet gives me a headache um, and it's just loaded with chemicals. So let's kind of search in here, Snuggle brand, uh, Snuggle. And so these rank, Snuggle dryer sheets rank an F. Um, horrible. <laughs> so, and then you click on it and it ranks really high for skin and allergy irritation, respiratory asthma um, contributor, and then environmental, it ranks as a high concern too. So things like um, anything that has an intense smell, you want to really be, um, you know, leery of. Another big one is going to be what you're washing your hands with, what your kids are washing your hands with. So um, anything that's like a Germex or says that it kills 99.9% .9 of germs, um, I would be uh, very cautious of because that's going to have some very hazardous chemicals. And then anything that says antibacterial, um, you want to avoid. That has a chemical called triclosan, and that's been shown to be very damaging to your kidneys, um, liver, and then as well as um, reproductive system too. So um, those that's something you really want to watch out for. And then things like Lysol um, loaded with chemicals. So same thing I could type in Lysol there and, and it would rank probably a, a D or an F category too. So these are the bad, but I want to show you how to replace them. So one good brand that we found is going to be Green Shield Organics. So if you type in the Green Shield Organics, I'll just kind of show you um, a good product looks like on their options, but this is the one that we personally use and um, and we, we like it. It also has in that same brand of um, uh, cleaning products, they have an all-purpose cleaner, and then they have like a toilet bowl cleaner. And so that's pretty much the only thing that we would use as far as like laundry detergent and um, cleaners. 
But instead of using dryer sheets, these things are really cool. They are laundry balls. So they are wool balls that you put in and they soften your clothes. And then if you want your clothes to have a good fragrance, then you just sprinkle some essential oil on them and then throw them in your dryer. So it's a very obviously like non-toxic way to freshen your clothes and to soften them. So we use these instead of um, toxic dryer sheets. One of my other favorite cleaners is going to be just Dr. Dr. Bronner's. So Dr. Bronner shows up um, super clean. One of the other things that's nice is the app. Um, EWG has an app on your phone, Healthy Living app. So you can actually scan a lot of products. So you just kind of put it right up to the barcode, you scan it. And then it shows you kind of where it ranks. So it has a ranking of one, which is fair. And then some of the Dr. Bronner's ranks, you know, even better than that. Um, but you want to keep your products to preferably ones or um, or EWG um, verified. So I use this for dishes. So instead of using like Dawn dish, you know, washer, um, you just put a little tiny drop of that in your sink and then maybe a little bit of vinegar. And that's a perfect combination for cleaning dishes. It's also a very good combination for any cleaner, whether you're cleaning your floor, you're cleaning your surfaces, just a little bit of the Castile soap and a little bit of the vinegar. Um, you know, that could pretty much take care of most of your cleaning needs in your house. Um, another thing that's a great cleaner is just good old fashioned baking soda. Um, you can put that in your laundry to whiten it, to freshen it. And then same thing, you can put that in your dishwasher um, and use that as a, as a natural dishwasher detergent. And then that has a really good cleaning scrub factor. So for tough jobs, you can just put a little bit of baking soda and water and clean up things rather than using like um, heavy duty uh, oven cleaners, toxic cleaners like that. Another thing that you want to watch out for in your house is going to be candles. Candles have a lot of synthetic fragrances and or and or air fresheners. So you want to like get rid of most of your like the Febreze and the air fresheners and candles. And then a good alternative is just to use a um, uh, air diffuser. So you just put water in it and then a few drops of your favorite essential oil and then that'll make your whole house smell good and that's much better than using um, candles and things like that. And then um, you can also get cleaning cloths that have um, fibers in them like silver filaments and fibers that actually work to kind of naturally disinfect and just using these nice cloths with some water um, you can wipe down windows and you can clean your surfaces and your counters and everything thing too. So, um, okay. So, uh, with that, um, here's just kind of action steps. Number one is do buy better brands. So, um, make your own or buy better brands, go through the ones that I talked about. There's many brands out there. You can take, I mean, you can take hours of time on that EWG. So sometimes it's nice just to go with what we know works and, and you know and what, what we've used personally. Uh, minimize your products. You don't need a ton of products, you know, cleaning products or personal care. Um, less, less is more. And then the third step is then you do have to focus on detoxing your body because we've been bombarded for years and years and years. And these toxins tend to accumulate in our tissues. So just to kind of um, hit on some of the things that I was talking about in the video, Dr. Bronner's like both toothpaste and the Castile liquid or the bar soap, awesome stuff. Um, the Schmitz deodorant, that's another good one. Um, the OM uh, Botanicals shampoo conditioner. I like to just use um, coconut oil for lotion. That's all I use for um, lotion is just like, is the extra virgin coconut oil. It's a great, um, like I talked about in the video, makeup remover. Vinegar is awesome. The Green Shield organic products are good. And then trying to, you know, set things with, um, you know, essential oils versus chemical cleaners um, too. And that's the website we talked about, ewg.org. You can go on there and look up products, both beauty and cleaning supplies to kind of work on cleaning up things too. Um, here's another area to work on is what you're putting your food in. Um, pots and pans, try to transition away from using um, nonstick um, and switch your pots and pans to stainless steel, cast iron, or you know, storing food in glass containers and getting away from using plastic. 
water bottles, you want to do um, your water bottles, you want to put um, stainless steel, glass, uh, avoid plastic, you know, for water bottles as well. Those are easy transitions. You just buy the better products, get rid of your old stainless, all, all your old nonstick products as well. Um, your water supply is another thing that you do want to, um, you know, check into. Um, you want to work on filtering your tap water. Any filter is better than no filter. So there's a lot of different types of water filters out there, but you do want to try to filter out as much of the chemicals as possible. Um, one big problem with, <coughs> with um, your tap waters is that they contain um, chlorine. Uh, chlorine reacts and produces a chemical called chloroform and, uh, and trihalomethane, T-H-M-S. Um, that chemical has been shown to both cause cancer and to oxidize your cholesterol. Um, fluoride that's been put in a lot of the drinking water as a way to, you know, supposedly help your teeth stay healthy. That's been disproven many times by the World Health Organization. Numerous studies found that fluoride added to drinking water does no good for your teeth. And fluoride has been banned in Belgium, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, uh, Norway, and Sweden. Um, and, uh, and that people, they found that people have a 93% higher risk of developing cancer when they're, they are drinking water that contains chlorine, um, and, and the fluoride in it as well too. So you want to try to filter out as many of those chemicals that you can. Um, that's only a good thing, you know, when you can minimize the exposure. Um, also you want to wa wa watch out on, you may be filtering your drinking water, but, um, you expose yourself to 25 gallons of water when you shower. And what does that mean for you? Um, what that means is that um, your body, your skin repels 75% of the um, water, but 25% of it is absorbed into your skin. And so that means a 15 minute shower um, is the equivalent to drinking eight glasses of cancer causing water. If you think about it and hot water produces steam, which you inhale and you're getting toxins that way as well too. So uh, an easy solution is a lot of companies offer shower filters that you screw into your shower or you get a home whole house water filtration system that is good uh, to kind of, you know, clean all the water that you're drinking or that you're exposed to um, in the shower. Uh, we are also exposed to a lot of chemicals um, through pesticides. There's over 3 million tons of pesticides um, each year are used kind of worldwide. And um, when you look at some of the top pesticides, um, they are things like um, glyphosate um, now is the most ever used, most used ever agricultural chemical. Um, in 2015, the World Health Organization declared glyphosate a probable carcinogen. And I just want to read you some of the, the things about uh, glyphosate um, and just kind of the numbers that are kind of scary. So um, there has been a 50 fold increase uh, in the usage of um, this uh, since 1996 when GMO glyphosate-resistant uh, uh, um, uh, crops were introduced. Today, there is 50 times more glyphosate allowed by the EPA on corn and grain than what, what it was allowed in 1996. They allow 50, 50 times more is allowed, you know, today than what was allowed back in 1996. And that's what, you know, um, majority of farmers are spraying or they're spraying other chemicals and um, and, and to, to kill the weeds, to kill the, 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 the bugs. But, um, but yet, you know, that this is having a downstream effect on the health of um, the health of, of people. And another area that you want to um, just kind of really try to avoid is going to be your um, GMO crops. So um, what is a GMO? Uh, I just want to talk about that. Um, a GMO is not something that naturally occurs in nature. Um, we're not talking about cross pollination or breeding of, you know, like to produce, you know, like they breed 
selectively breed dogs to produce, produce, you know, you know, that that's not what this is. What GMO is that they're directly manipulating an organism's DNA um, in a laboratory environment. Um, GMO plants and animals um, are, um, are things that would not occur in nature where you're taking DNA from another plant and injecting it into another that would never have occurred in nature. And, um, and that um, it may also, you know, affect the health of the body that many studies are coming out about the dangers of GMOs. A lot of countries have banned GMOs. Um, in America, you're not even, uh, they don't even require people to label food that has GMOs in it. But you can look for that little butterfly emblem and it says GMO verified, GMO free verified. And that's something you do want to look for um, and, and try to avoid as many exposures as you can to GMOs, um, especially that's going to be in corn, um, soybeans, uh, and then, um, you know, where you're going to get exposure to a lot of, of the GMOs um, with that. Uh, this was a crazy study that was done um, and they studied mice that had been fed um, GMO uh, corn and soybeans. And what they found in the study, um, food, and I wanna read about this because they say food companies um, got away with saying that GMOs were safe by doing a 150 day study of rats that appeared to show no symptoms. However, what they knew and what they covered up was that after 150 days, the same um, exact study using the same foods and the same rats caused tumors to grow. And they knew that after 150 days, this would happen. So they purposefully kept the study under 150 days. Um, and the exact study was reproduced and found to cause tumors after 150 days. Um, but then they somehow said that that was unscientific and they you know, discredited um, that research. And that's kind of what happens. That's what's happening now with, um, with, with vaccines and, and, and injecting animal DNA and, and pathogens you know, into the human body. And any study that comes out showing that that's a problem, um, that research gets, 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 gets discredited. The, the scientists, you know, they, 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 you know, they shut them down. And so, but I, I tell you, you look at that picture and it's like, if that's happening to them after eating GMOs for 150 days, you know, what is it doing to us? What is it doing to the children that are grown up eating a lot of these packaged processed foods that are loaded um, with GMOs? So are you toxic? Here's some signs that your body may be toxic that you may not realize are signs of toxicity. One is chronic sinus infections, congestion, um, short-term memory loss, tr tr trouble focusing, muscle twitching, muscle pain, inability to lose weight despite exercising and dieting is that you probably have an issue with toxicity, um, red or tearing eyes if you have appetite swings, sweet, you know, a lot of sweet cravings, um, and then frequent urination, night sweats is a sign that your body's toxic, uh, you know, extreme fatigue after exercise, sensitivity to light, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, um, chemical sensitivities, um, joint pain, and then um, trouble processing new information like brain fog. Uh, you wake up and your whole body kind of feels stiff in, in, in the morning and then suffering from not having restful sleep. Those are signs of, of toxicity for sure. So um, your body is built with the ability to detox um, glutathione is your body's most powerful antioxidant. It's kind of like your God-given ability to handle exposure to toxins is through um, this antioxidant called glutathione. Your body needs building blocks to produce adequate amount, amounts of glutathione. So you need uh, cysteine, glycine, uh, glutamic acid are um, you know crucial for your body to be able to produce glutathione. Crazy thing is, is that a lot of our current lifestyle, high stress lifestyles, um, constant bombardment to constant exposure to chemicals, um, not eating diets that are, you know, high in certain nutrients can cause your own glutathione storages to become depleted, which, you know, sets you up for even more of a, of a issue with toxicity. Um, also sulfur rich compounds like glutathione 
bind to toxins and help to remove them from your body. So um, vitamin U, cultured dairy products, whey proteins um, also really help to support liver function and helping your body to detox. Um, this picture goes through two stages of liver uh, of your body's ability to detox. So you have toxins um, in your body and um, you require certain nutrients to be able to take them from your body and eliminate them either through your urine or through your bowels. So B vitamins are key to have adequate detox. You gotta have good amount of B vitamins in your body. Folic acid, glutathione, antioxidants like vitamin C, vitamin E, carotenoids, and then um, things like milk thistle are also very good for detoxing. Um, phase two, step two requires your amino acids like glutamine, glycine, taurine, cysteine, and then sulfur uh, rich uh, phytochemicals that are found in cruci cruciferous vegetables like garlic, um, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower. Um, those are great to eat to help to decrease your, um, you know, detox pathways. And then once it kind of goes through that, that phases of detox in the liver, then your body can eliminate it through the, the gallbladder, the bile into your bowels, or through your kidneys, and then through your urine. Um, it's how you can get rid of the toxins in your body. So what we found is that a majority of Americans, um, we have a certain level of toxic buildup and um, from maybe it was passed on from our parents and we got, you know, and inherited this certain level of toxicity. Um, maybe, you know, growing up, you ate nothing but packaged food, processed food, junk foods that were loaded with preservatives. Uh, maybe you've, you've never learned about cleaning up your personal care products or maybe you drink, um, you know, water that isn't filtered. Um, maybe you've had have had vaccines and you have had, um, you take medications, you know, is like, we can't necessarily get away from toxins altogether. And uh, it's very good idea to detox your body to help get rid of some of this toxic burden that's linked to increased risk of cancer, increased risk of autoimmunity, um, you know, all these kind of gamut of, um, you know, new, new, new health issues that are arising. So one great solution is our detox um, system um, product. And um, I really um, love this product. I think it works really well for the, the toxicity aspect for people. Um, when you look at what's in the detox product, um, it's broke up into two, um, two, two capsules, um, the cell detox and the body detox. So I'll go through what's actually in the cell detox and then I'll go through what's in the body detox. So the cell detox has those foundational um, uh, amino acids, uh, cysteine, glycine, glutamine, um, to kind of build those building blocks so your body can make adequate amount of glutathione. So that helps support your own body's ability to produce glutathione, which is like your most powerful antioxidant. But most of us are missing a lot of those foundational um, things so our body can even make adequate glutathione. And the other things down there you're going to see is powerful detoxing um, agents like dandelion extract, milk thistle, um, cabbage powder that contains the, the, the sulfur, um, and then it has as well as L-glutathione in there too. And then it has furthermore detoxing ingredients, chlorella, um, spirulina, catalase, uh, superoxide dismentase, which is a high potent um, antioxidant as well. So um, the body, de the cell detox, when you take that, um, let me run and, and grab a, a bottle of it so you can kind of understand what that looks like. Okay, so what that is, and here's how you take it, because I know um, a lot of people do want to start to detox because they're being aware of how bad these chemicals are. So um, the cell detox, that's the ones I just described, and um, it has the, um, the, all those good detoxing agents. So you take this one kind of first thing in the morning. Um, ideally, you take it on an empty stomach, and you'd want to take it, um, you know, with lots of water and then away from medications um, and trying to take it 
like I said, on an empty stomach. What I do when I am taking my detox is I take it first thing in the morning. Um, I take it with, you know, drink a big glass of water, take my detox when I first get out of bed. Um, I take the cell detox. And then the second product that's on there is the body detox. And that's this second bottle that all comes in um, the detox kit. So um, the detox, um, body detox, what's in that one is going to be things that help to bind to the toxins that you've pulled out of your body with the cell detox. So it has magnesium um, that helps with bowel movements, has activated charcoal, which is a binding agent. Um, and then it has um, fiber, has flaxseed powder. And then um, it has um, some, also some botanical blends of fenugreek, ginger root, peppermint, fennel seed, all good things that are great for supporting healthy bowels and to kind of help minimize, um, you know, the bad effects of um, sometimes like a harsh type detox. I, I tell you, you do not get diarrhea taking this. I've had people worried about starting to take the detox as they think like, I want to wait and start it on a weekend where I'm not having to worry about go the, going to the bathroom. That tends to not be the case. Typically what tends to happen is if anything, you got to make sure you drink enough water to flush the toxins out that this is pulling out because it may kind of tend to back you up a little bit. So always drink lots of water as you're doing your um, cell detox and as you're doing your body detox. So the body detox you take at night, um, you take it um, after you've eaten dinner, maybe an hour or two after you've eaten dinner, before you go to bed at night, you take two of the body detox and you drink it, um, drink water, um, and then you go to sleep. So that helps to bind. So in the morning when you get up and go to the bathroom, you know, things have been bound and they're, and they're going to get flushed out through your bowels um, or through your urine um, as well, too. So um, the detox um, product, um, you can go on to... Um, our store website we put on the comments that's our link to um get your um you know your products uh or that detox product um since we're kind of spring cleaning um the detox system we're going to be giving it 15 percent off um the next two weeks in our office so for patients those of you that have been wanting to detox and you're ready to kind of start to take it Get it while it's 15% off the next two weeks and start doing your, your detox. Recommend you take it for um, at least three months um, to kind of really see best results. And you can fluctuate your months where maybe you take two and two of the, the cell in the body, you take it for a whole month like that. And then the next month you could do a deeper one where you're taking four of the cell detox and four of the body detox. So it only lasts you two weeks, but you're doing kind of a, an amped up version to pull even more toxins out. And then the next month you could just do standard dosage um, with that as well. But I always feel better after a detox does help with weight loss, helps with sleep, um, helps with your hormones. Your thyroid and toxicity are very much linked together. So if you have hormonal um, type issues, detoxing your body is always a good thing um, to do to help you with that as well. Um, and then you also want to work on just making sure that your body is working the best it can and detoxing um, from the inside, that you have best connection from your brain, your nerves that go to your liver, your nerves that go to your bowels, your nerves that go to your, your, your kidneys, um, to just help your body fully function and fully be able to detox the way that it is supposed to. So um, you know, recommended is that, you know, you, you're making sure you're doing your adjustments, you're, you're taking care of your spine, you're doing your home care exercises. So you are fully opening up your nervous system. So your, your liver's working great, your bowels are working great. Everything's working better. Um, Patients, after I've adjusted them, I find that most of them say like, oh yeah, I'm going to the bathroom better, which is good. That'll help you detox. Um, if you're sleeping better, your body's going to detox better. Um, you know, so getting adjusted does help to put your body in a, in a better state of being able to detox, being able to, you know, um, help to eliminate a lot of these chemicals that you're exposed to. Um, if you're watching this webinar and um, this is the first time you're hearing about this, or maybe you do have a lot of these signs of toxicity, or maybe you have other warning signs like headaches, high blood pressure, um, depression, dizziness, fatigue, um, frequent colds, um, skin problems, eczema. Um, these are things that I know that we can help you with. We help patients 
with these things all the time, have victory over them, get to the cause and get their bodies functioning better from within. So um, uh, here's how you can get plugged into our office. We offer special discounts to come in and get evaluations, um, normal evaluations in our clinic, um, to get exams, to get x-rays, to check your nervous system. It would be $110. Um, we do specials. If you've watched this webinar, you can go right to our website and what that looks like is it's advanced spinal health and wellness. And um, that's Dr. Benson um, dot max And um, on that website, I'll put it at the bottom of the screen here. Um, you go there and you click on um, contact our clinic, request an appointment, and then you'll fill out that little um, sheet right there. And what that says on it is, um, to put down your info. So you just put down your name, your last name, your email, your phone. How'd you hear about us? The detox webinar, the spring clean webinar. And then you submit that, um, that'll get emailed to us. We'll call you, we can schedule that appointment for you to get your special discounted evaluation um, to come into the clinic to help you with detoxing, to help you just with any of the health issues you may be struggling with and how to get well um, versus going to the medical doctor and becoming more toxic because they're putting you on more medications with more side effects, more symptoms. You know, our goal is that we want to help you to be able to get your body healthy so you don't need the medications. You can work with your doctor to get off the medications because you're actually fixing what's actually causing the problem. Um, the last thing I, I want to round out the, 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 the webinar here with today is your nutrition. So you got to work on cleaning up your diet. So we teach our patients um, how to eat what we call like the max living plan. Um, so, but it's just getting back to eating natural foods. Like this would be a great example of a lunch is that you eat a salad with fresh, you know, vegetables on it versus eating, you know, um, you know, hamburger and French fries and um, all those things. So uh, driving home from work yesterday, I saw that at the, the Dairy Queen, there was a line like that extended down the road. And then same thing with Taco Bell yesterday is that there was literally a traffic jam because so many people were trying to eat fast food. So, you know, which is, which is highly toxic. It, it has to be the worst of the worst, loaded with the most chemicals, the most preservatives. And um, we did this experiment one time where we bought um, a McDonald's hamburger, uh, you know, a Wendy's hamburger, um, you know, uh, Burger King. And um, we set them in the office and we saw that, and we made a homemade hamburger and the homemade hamburger had mold on it within a, a few days. Um, the McDonald's hamburger never got mold. We still have it and it's like 10 years old and it's still in a, in a jar and it has no mold on it at all. The cheese, the burger are still in, you know, there. And um, just think how many preservatives and chemicals does it have that it can last 10 years? Like it's older than a lot of our kid patients is that that burger has been around longer than them. So um, you want to try to obviously avoid fast foods, start to make your food at home, and then start to eat fresh vegetables um, with every meal. As an example of a breakfast, uh, get away from eating cereals. Um, big reason why you want to avoid cereals, a lot of them are um, made with GMO grains. Um, or they they're have tons of chemicals, they have um, the glyphosate. Um, so avoid cereal in the morning. Try to use something like eggs, grass-fed, um, you know, uh, free-range eggs. Um, you know, eat a vegetable in the morning too. Another great option for mornings is make a smoothie um, or do a fresh juice that you make with, with your own juicer at home versus grabbing like convenience breakfast foods like a, a granola bar. Um, those are highly loaded with sugar, loaded with processed grains. Um, do, do something like an, a smoothie or a, a fresh juice in the morning, not, not orange juice, but making your own green juice um, using a juicer. Um, another example too is like Make your own food. Don't buy the convenience foods like Hamburger Helper. Um, those are notorious for being loaded with tons of chemicals, tons of preservatives, flavor enhancers, you know, things that you do not want in your body or your kids' body. Make your own sauces, make your own, you know, dishes from scratch. We have tons of recipes. If you go to that, the website, Max Living, um, you know, drbenson.maxliving.com, 
there's tons of recipes. They have the, like the recipe vault and we can get great ideas. Um, there's recipes. If you guys have our um, Align Your Health book, there's tons of recipes in there. Um, there's no shortage of good recipes, but you do have to start to make your own food. And then um, it's pretty much just simple that uh, eat real food. Eat real food. Don't eat packaged food. Don't eat processed food. Get back into eating real live you know, food. And then um, those of you that are wanting to take it to another level, you can always do a detox using your diet. So um, what that looks like is you can do like a smoothie detox or a green juice detox. Um, this picture shows different ways to make smoothies with using either almond milk or coconut milk unsweetened or coconut water or just plain water, adding berries to it, adding greens to it like spinach, kale, romaine, um, avocados, and then using a good grass fed whey, um, like our Mac living whey protein or bone broth protein, um, or how to make your own juice, um, and using like celery, cucumber, spinach, kale, um, cabbage, um, Swiss chard, ginger, you can make your own juices as well. Those of you that want to do that juice cleanse, um, or the smoothie cleanse, um, we can get you guys that, and then you can try to start to to do that for you know a two week period. Um, really doing a cleanse like that for two weeks, you're gonna feel a lot better. You're gonna notice some good changes um, with that as well. And kind of what it looks like structure wise, one of the, the ways you could do it is you can in the morning take your cell detox with 24 ounces of water. Then you can have your smoothie. Um, and take like a men's and women's multi if you guys are taking multivitamins. Um, and then late morning, do your fresh juice, have another smoothie for lunch. Mid afternoon, you can do another fresh juice and then you eat an advanced planned dinner. And you can switch that up. Um, for me, that seems like a lot of um, juicing and a lot of smoothies. Um, I, I would do better with just doing maybe one smoothie one juice and then advanced plan dinner. But if that doesn't seem like enough for you to eat that you'd be starving, then you can do do the more advanced, you know, do the more we're doing, you know, two smoothies and two juices and then your your dinner at night. But mainly you're forcing tons of good nutrients in your body through your smoothies, through your juices. You're giving your bowels some some rest because they're not having to digest. It's kind of pre-digested. And then um, and then those greens and the things in the smoothies also help to detox your body. And then you're doing advanced plan meal, which basically means you're eating vegetables and a good quality organic um, protein, like um, free range chicken, uh, organic grass fed beef um, with vegetables. Um, and that's what you're having for dinner. No grains, no sugars. You're avoiding those type of things. So um, if anybody wants to do that, you, um, we have those um, plans, we have those outlines, we can get those to you um, as well. And then last thing I just wanna talk about detoxing is our mindset. I think that with all that um, we have been through with going on, uh, that people's mindsets right now, um, the average person, they're not very good. Um, they're filled with a lot of fear. They have worry. They have anxiety. They're being fearful to even be around people. So um, I do tell you that we probably, it'd probably be good for you to do a mental detox as well. And um, this slide talks about how how our lives move in the direction of our strongest thoughts. So, um, you know, what negative thoughts are dominating your thinking right now? And I feel like that's all that people have been getting is negative thoughts and negative messaging, um, negative propaganda that's been you know, just fed to people through the media, through Facebook. So um, do start to self analyze and feel like, what, what are my most dominant thoughts right now? And then, um, and then you want to find out like what spiritual truth will demolish these strongholds. So, and you want to start to reprogram your negative thoughts with um, these good spiritual truths. And so what that can look like is, um, you know, as you look up some of your favorite, you know, Bible verses. So you can start to fill your mind with, I am a child of God, Galatians 3.26. Um, I am alive, Romans 6.11. Uh, I am faith-filled, life-speaking, and, um, you know, fully devoted follower of Christ. I am Christ's ambassador. 
I am a masterpiece, Ephesians 2.10. Um, I am chosen, Ephesians 1.4. Um, you can just start to reprogram these negative thoughts and start to focus on these good spiritual thoughts every day, um, you know, and start to, you know, focus on these. So um, some of them that, that I like is um, I am strengthened by God who upholds me, protects me, defends me. Um, I am joyful. Um, I am patient. I am I am faithful. Um, I am steady. I am loved. I am free. I am healed. Um, I am strong. I am fearless. Um, Isaiah 43, 5. Um, and I, uh, I, I do not... Um, I do not worry, you know, I do not have anxiety because I know that, that God is in control. So um, just do some self-evaluating, figure out what you're thinking about. It does affect your physical health. Um, this slide talks about how your thoughts are actually um, have effects on your physical being. So every thought we have is tangible energy with the power to transform. A thought is not only a thing, a thought is a thing that influences other things. And that um, if you've been bombarding your cells with negative thoughts, you are literally programming yourselves to receive more of the same negative peptides in the future. Even worse, you're lessening your receptors for positive peptides. And you tend to make yourself to be more inclined towards negativity. So, um, but the good thing is, is that every cell in your body is replaced about every two months. So when you can really focus on being in a state of gratitude, being in a state of thank thankfulness, um, living in a, a faith-filled state and not a fear-filled state, and focusing on these daily scriptures, these daily things that you're telling yourself, you can actually start to change um, you know, the physical makeup of your mind and making your mind more programmed to be more optimistic um, instead of being more, more negative focused. And a key with this too, is I think that you have to distance yourself from, from the news. I, I you know, and, and turn it off and stop watching the news um, and just start, you know, um, reading your Bible more, start praying more, start being outside in nature more, start filling your, your mind uh, with good things on a, on a daily basis. And um, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, you can always feel free to ask. Um, you can ask comments um, in, in the questions below. But I encourage you to share this video, like it, um, pass it on you know, to, to people. That way they can understand this. Because um, most people, if they're not taught how to clean up their, their lifestyle or that their products are toxic, um, then, then they don't know what they don't know. And we want to just be able to educate as many people as possible. So thank you, guys. Thanks for coming.